Good evening. Thank you for joining Hadassah's Crown Publishing. I am Dr. Sonia Cunningham Leverett, the founder and the operator of Hadassah's Crown Publishing. We have been in existence since 2016 and we have over 50 books on the shelf. God has blessed and he continues to bless us. We have some exciting announcements that we will share with you at the end of our interview tonight, but I would like to not spend any more time before we introduce our awesome author who is with us tonight. She is none other than Minister Sarita Acker. She is a personal friend of mine. And so I've just been very blessed to work with her on this project. She has been given a word from God. She's been given many words from God, but she chose to share these in this book. It is entitled Believing, Thinking and Speaking. And here's a copy. I am not going to spend much more time. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself in her own special way. And then we will discuss our many different topics. So Minister Acker, will you share exactly who you are? Hi, again, I am just so delighted to be here with Dr. Sonia Leverett tonight. And I'm just, just glad to be here to talk to her about my book. I am again, Sarita Acker and um, just live here in Anderson and just love the Lord and just excited to share what God has uh, given me with you. Awesome. Awesome. So the title, Believing, Thinking and Speaking, how did that come about? To be honest with you, I do believe that the book was just definitely an inspiration from God. Um, as we have been all dealing with the pandemic, I often would pray in my private time and just ask God, what, what can I say to people? How can I encourage them? You know, when they're seeing all kind of things on the news and not knowing what to believe. And then, you know, uh, when you see a lot of things on the news, you begin to believe some of those things. And then uh, you begin to think about them. And sometimes they can cause great anxiety or what have you. So I wanted to help people begin to uh, stand on the promises of God and believe and think and speak what he has told us in his word. Wow. And you just really nailed it because it is a very timely piece. And um, just I, I love the color of the um, the cover. Beautiful on the front and beautiful on the back as well. And it's a timely gift because I just listened to the press conference coming from the White House. I listened to the press conference coming from Governor McMaster and his team. And the lady from the White House, and I, I apologize for not remembering her name, but she talked about the mental health crisis, how more people are depressed, using drugs, um, using alcohol, and that the suicide rate is up. And so when we look around and we receive text messages and emails and news clippings every few minutes, somebody has just died or killed themselves. Somebody else has COVID. Somebody else just went on a ventilator. All of these things, it's difficult. So people who have never struggled with their mental health or with feelings of desperation are in a completely different situation right now. And I know it's difficult for me because I've never experienced Thanksgiving or Christmas without my extended family. But we just do not want to put anyone at risk. And, and my question, too, is even if you get the testing done 48 hours before Thanksgiving, what if you're exposed after you get that test? You know, it, it's just best not to gather to keep everyone safe. And I don't want to go off on that tangent. But. This book is filled with scriptures to help you fill your mind with the positive promises that God has spoken to us. So I just say that it's so very timely because so many of the topics and we won't tell too much about it because we need you to get your own copy. But, you know, when you're having issues, just for example, with loneliness, that's a huge one right now. You have a scripture guide right here to tell you where to go in the Bible to read about that. And I really like that. So I won't go through the whole book, but just if you will tell us the different components of it and what they mean and, and why they were placed there that way. Well, again, I, I just want to, as you have said, want to encourage people because there is so much going on. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. 
And I just want to remind people that God has made promises and his promises are true. And that as Christians, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we don't walk by what we see and Mm -hmm. that we will go through trials and tribulations in this world. But Jesus told us that we, you know, will overcome. And so all of this is really, you know, the core of why I wrote the book. But some of the things that you will find, of course, as you've already said, is topical. So if you're dealing with fear or you have dealt with death, or you're dealing with your finances, or you're dealing with things in your relationship, in your marriage, or your children, or whatever, there is a topic in there in the, you know, different, um, in, in the within the book, for you to look at what God has said about those circumstances. And it's, it's not to replace the Word of God, but it is something to be uh, uh, I guess a partner with your Bible reading and your devotional time, because I think, no, you know, we really do need to spend that time with God. And I wanted to give uh, my brothers and sisters something that they could use and go and find out exactly what God says about their situation. Then I'm so excited that in the back, there is a uh, opportunity to write down um, prayer requests. We all need to pray. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And so we need to pray for many people. We need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for our president elect and our current president and everyone. And so I wanted, you know, people to have an opportunity to put down what they were praying for. You can write initials. You don't have to write out the names and just let God know that, hey, I'm writing it down. I'm praying for whoever. And then when, whenever the prayers are answered, you can just glorify and magnify God even before they are, but during it as well. And then the other thing that I have is um, I have an opportunity for you to write the vision. I was in a leadership meeting yesterday um, at the university and one of the things it was it, they were talking about is is that writing down uh, what you desire to see in your life is very key. And they were talking about this in the secular sense, but it's biblical because God says, write the vision and make it plain. So writing down, you know, where where do I want to be with my health? Where do I want to be in my marriage? Where do, what do I want to see my children do? So it's very interactive. And then I love there's another section that talks about just testimonies. I don't know about you, but God has brought me from a mighty long ways. And I like to remember where I came from and how he's brought me over. So there's an opportunity to write your own personal testimony. And then finally, there is an opportunity as well to write down those revelations that you, uh, you know, sometimes people will give you a word of knowledge or they'll give you a prophecy or something. And you need to write that down and, 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 you know, and try the spirit by the spirit and see, see about that as well. And then I also will say that after each topical subject at the end you get to add your own scriptures there was no way i could think of every scripture in the bible so this gives them the opportunity to look and see okay god said you know do not fear but what else does he say about fear what else does he say about worry and then you are to speak those things out and mm-hmm. and and uh, you know you to believe and to think on those things and one of my favorite parts of the whole book that I wrote was a daily declaration that I feel that God gave to me that it gives different subjects about, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want my latter great days will be greater than my past. I mean, all of that. And you just speaking it into the atmosphere because we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we also know that as a man thinking his heart, so is he. And finally, I would like to say that When we give our lives to Christ, the core scripture is that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has raised from the dead and you shall be saved. So all of that is speaking, thinking, and believing. Amen. Well, I want to talk just a few minutes about how well the book has been received. Um, For example, you know, you play order after order after order. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't out why it seems like I have a little bit of an echo. But at the same time, um, we have several of your supporters on right now. Um, Billy Donald, Gail, Gayla Hunter, um, Keisha Harper is another Hadassah's Crown Publishing author. And then Danielle Kay. And Danielle, I will not mess up your last name. Um, <laughs> won't. But 
you know, we got a lot of amens when you talked about that vision and writing that vision and making it plain. And then um, someone said, that's powerful, the daily declaration. I like that. And that is so important. And so you have been the adult um, daily declaration leader as far as the authors go. But I have someone now who's publishing a book for children to decree and declare over their lives every day. That is so important for them every day on their way to school. I am smart. I am intelligent. I am brilliant. I can do all things through Christ. We have to pour that into them very young. And so True. this is, you know, a guide to help us with that. But these daily declaration, declarations are very powerful. So I won't get off my topic as far as, um, you know, the support that you have received. Um, it's a time to thank your, you know, followers and just let them know how much you love them. But then, you know, kind of what's next? Where do you plan to, um, you know, what, let's see, what audiences will we push the book into next? Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone that's owned and not owned that supported me. I praise God for you. I feel that he gave it to me and I had an opportunity to give to you. And I love you all. You know, some of you I may not even know. I mean, I've got orders, many, many orders, and I'm so excited about that. I pray that, you know, they will go out more. Uh, basically, uh, my audience is anybody that wants to just get more closer with God to have that to have more things that you do during your devotional time. And when I think about it, I get up in the morning, I declare and decree what the word is said. If I have anything that I'm worried about, I go to the scriptures on worry. If I have something that I'm fearing, I go to the scriptures on fear. If I'm if anything that I'm having, you know, that I'm going through, I go and I see what the word of God says. And I think that we live in a time that yes, we we do want to hear about Bible stories, but we also want to sometimes know, God, what do you say about how I'm feeling? What do you say about the state of the world? And you have an opportunity to do that. So I'm so excited. What I see next, uh, Dr. Leverett, is, is that I want to do a book on healing and I want to do it really pretty much like I've done this one, uh, an interactive journal. I want to do it. I'm actually working on it now and it's called Throne Talk. And what it means is talking about God says, I for, I love you and I forgive you. And I want to really um, go to the core of those of us that have faced hurt and pain, which all of us have in our lives in some kind of way. And I want to use the, the declaration theme, but I also want to use prayers that you can pray. So I'm so excited about that, that uh, project as well. It will probably come out sometime next year, but it's still in that theme of knowing that God has you and that he will take care of you and just reiterating what he says. We hear a lot of noise about what other people are saying on the news and our, you know, our family members, our co-workers, everyone. But what does God say about our situation? Amen. Amen. It's very easy when we get some news or we see something hurtful or we're feeling some kind of way because those emotions daily are up and then they're down and back and forth and so forth. It's so easy. We're conditioned to go text, to call someone, um, so many different things that we do. But at the same time, we got to learn how to go to God, how to pick up that um, Bible and to meditate on that word. Find out what he said. It's not what, you know, the person across the street or someone else said. It's what God says. And when it comes to healing, that is such a needed um, instrument right now. And I know that you just as an educator, the training that I've had as far as talking about childhood trauma and how that manifests itself in so many different ways. And so the same two children can experience the same type of event, but their behaviors are going to be different. And it's very interesting because when I learned about um, domestic violence and child sexual abuse and molestation rape, all of these different things, I always knew that there was something within me that had that that caused me to have um, some of these same type of worries, fears, anxiety, all of that. But I never could figure out exactly what it was. And so a few weeks back, I had an opportunity to go to a new doctor and I was not expecting what I came out with. But she, in examining my body, she said there was trauma at four years old. She said, mm -hmm. do you hear what happened? 
And I said, well, I did have a little motorcycle accident. Maybe it was then. I said, but I really didn't think that that was that huge. You know, I went to the emergency room, got some stitches and everything was OK. But when I got to a lunch and I was attending with my mom and my sisters, I said, Mama, can you help me remember something that happened when I was four? And my sister immediately said, I know you didn't forget when those dogs attacked you when you were four. And I said, oh, my goodness. I remember that like it was yesterday, but I never I never realized that that was trauma still in my body that was still affecting my mind, my digestive system and so many more things. And so that was like so eye opening because when you take the test that talks about adverse childhood experiences, we call them ACEs, you know, it's divorce, it's, you know, abuse, it's, um, a, you know, moving separation, maybe being separated from your parents or having to move across the country, just all is there 10 things but it was nothing to make me even think about that event and how that was in a way crippling. Mm. And so when you talk about healing, you know, when we can really get on the inside and into the core and realize why we act the way we do, why we do some of the things that we do, you know, that is such a needed thing. And, and even, you know, as children, but then as teenagers and then even as adults, we have those hurts that will just sit there and fester. And they will hold us back from being the best people that we can be until we actually deal with them. So I'm sure. excited about this. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to experience, you know, the writing part of that where you're just able to just release it. Because I know personally how important and how therapeutic writing is. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, I've been through some adult trauma and writing your experience and then letting it go. That is like one of the best feelings on earth. It's painful sometimes to relive those mem those memories, but once you put it down and you release it, you know, it really takes a burden off you. It really does. And you probably can share some of that because I know we were together in two of our anthologies where your I love you and um, I forgive you stories have come from. Yes, I, I definitely agree with you, Dr. Leverett. I mean, I wouldn't say that I ever thought of myself as a writer, but I just kind of stepped out on faith and really writing the trauma that I had went through really, really uh, helped me to release it and work through it. And so I really feel that uh, we need more people to come forth. You don't have to tell all your business or anything like that. You have to be led. But at the same time, it was a release so that I can help somebody else. And if I can help somebody along the way, then I feel really excited about that. And that really helped me a little with my healing process. Exactly. Exactly. So this next book is on the horizon. I just don't feel like that's going to be it. I just feel like you're on a pathway to something and there's probably going to be a library at some point. So I don't, you don't have to reveal what your next book is, but I just know you have some other things that you will be a part of. And I yeah. want to pray about it. We just, we're releasing a book called, Oh, How We Love Our Sons. It's coming yeah. out November 28th. And I'll talk about the release of that before we end, but we're going to eventually do one, Oh, we, How We Love Our Girls. And for those of you who don't know Minister Acker, she has two beautiful daughters who are grown now. But um, I would love to hear her talk about, you know, her relationship with them and just what was, you know, what really stood out about rearing those two beautiful young ladies. Oh, yes. I would love to be a part of something like that. I saw that about the sons and I thought that was just, you know, great. So I'm excited to read that and see that. And yeah, I would definitely love to, you know, be able to a way in on how it is to raise girls. Awesome. Awesome. So um, how can potential readers contact you? I have shared in the chat or on the banner, um, heartandmouth.com, um, that that is your ministry and your website. Um, but if you want to talk just a few minutes about, you know, any workshops or um, speaking, and I know, you know, most of what we're doing right now is through Zoom, but that's still a powerful way to connect because I know that you know, Bible study and um, women's groups, all sorts of things are still going on, even though, you know, we're in a pandemic. Well, of course, my website that you see at the bottom of the screen is a way that you can you know, connect with me. And also uh, I have a, a, a weekly sister talk 
in which we get together and do devotionals and inspirations and encourage each each and you know each person that's there. And so I encourage people to you know get in touch with us and get involved with that, especially being that most people are in. It's just a good way to connect. So that is another way to connect. And so uh, yeah, those are ways that I have an opportunity to minister to others and. Uh, next month, December is almost here. I'll be on Nightline sharing about um, your know, believing, thinking, and speaking God's kingdom promises. And I'm hoping that you know people will tune in and hear about again the journey that I took in writing this uh, interactive journal, and just you know let more people know about it as well. Awesome. What's the date for the Nightline appearance? I believe that it is December the 3rd, but I will post okay. it on my Facebook because I'm not 100% certain. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to put it down here, um, Nightline in December. Um, stay tuned. Okay. Information. Trying to keep our um, audience abreast of what's going on and give them some things to remember and some reminders. And then this is too for anyone who is not here with us tonight but who watches the video later and actually sees, they can go back and look and see, you know, what the details were. And so, hello, Sharon Quarles. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I get to see her when I am able to tune in for Sister Talk, a wonderful high time in the Lord where, um, you know, there is the speaker, there's prayer, there's the decreeing, but it's, it's a time to just come together and to worship. So if you're able and you do, um, you know, have an opportunity to join. I encourage that because again, there are so many things that we can do with our time and it's just not productive. Right. But now is a time and the good thing is while we've been at home, hopefully we've been spending more time in prayer. We've been spending more time in our Bibles because if we ever need it, I mean, we've always needed it, but now I think it's more evident for more people to really see how much we need to be praying we need to be fasting. We need to be on our knees and really asking for healing. And like you said, we have to cover our current president, our president elect, all of our leaders, because it's a, a difficult time. It really it is. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so God certainly has the answers for us. Yes. So I've done a lot of talking, but I want to make sure that you get an opportunity to say everything that you'd like to say and anything special that you'd like to share with our audience before we get to the point where we do our closing announcements? I would just like to say that I'd like to thank everyone that tuned in to hear us tonight on Facebook Live. And I am just encouraging you to, uh, those of you that have the book, to really just use it because, again, there's so much there. And, you know, I just believe that we're living in a time that people really want to know what God says because he is the only answer. He is in total control. He has shown us this by us, you know, being in now. So I pray that you will use it and that you would uh, grow and from glory to glory. And I just thank um, Dr. Leverett for, you know, her having me on tonight. And I'm just excited about what God is going to do. I decree and declare that our latter days are going to be greater than our past. Just believe it, speak it and think it. Amen. I appreciate that. I receive it. And I just appreciate all the wonderful things that you have to say and blessing me and other people. And, you know, I know that your ministry will continue to grow and to prosper. I'm going to show the um, cover of the book again. If you don't already have it, you need it. And if you have it, you know, it's a great gift that you can give to someone else. Our governor was just encourage, encouraging online shopping, you know, I don't plan to spend time at the mall. I don't plan to, you know, frequent Belk and Coles and all of these other places because those aren't really necessary places that I have to go. You know, I'll go to the grocery store and I'll go to the drug store, but I plan to be, I plan to quarantine myself to keep my family safe and those around me because this um, pandemic is really, really, really um, at a max right now and it continues to kind of max out. And so, this is a great gift that you can get online. I encourage you to purchase it. And in our closing, I'd just like to share, this is our Boy Mom um, anthology that we are launching on November 28th. We'll be back here on Facebook Live at 10 o'clock. We'll start, we'll have some prizes and we'll have some fun and you'll get an opportunity to meet our 14 contributors. 
So we do have some other publications underway, um, look at those. But right now we pretty much have a full library on our website, hadassascrownpublishing.com. And I encourage you to support our authors. Um, some these books would make great gifts. One of our authors who is on, um, Keisha Harper, she has the cutest children's book. It's called, Have You Ever Seen a Zebra Eat Zucchini? And when I go to see my four-year-old nephew, it's the only book that he will read with me. He loves it. He has the book memorized. And so I had to get him the activity book. So support and, um, you know, gift, the gift of reading is a great gift to give anyone. So we encourage you to support our authors and, you know, purchase books for, for the holidays. So we thank you all for being here with us tonight. We're grateful. We're honored. We're humbled. And we just ask that you continue to follow us, heartandmouth.com and also Hadassah's Crown Publishing. We're on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. And we would love to have you in touch with us. So we pray that everyone will have a wonderful night, have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving and take care. And to God be the glory. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being with me.